Do you ever wonder what your options are as a serverless developer? Do you ever wonder what else is there out there? Maybe you love AWS Lambda. Maybe you've built many fantastic applications on top of AWS Lambda, but there's some things you're just still not quite sure about. Maybe you're tired about having all these conversations that still seem to go on and on and on about cold starts. Or maybe you've had to think about multi-region architecture. And although you no longer need to think about all these other infrastructure concerns, you still need to care about whereabouts in the world your users are and how you make sure they have the best experience possible, which gets all the more difficult when you need to think about failing over to other regions. And these are all things you need to think about with any of the typical serverless providers. Enter Cloudflare. Now you might think of Cloudflare and you might just think of DNS and DDoS protection and web security and CDNs. Cloudflare is so much more than that now. Cloudflare has support for serverless functions, for databases, for caches, for queues, and for one of my favorite pieces of technology that I've worked with in recent times, that is called durable objects. So that's what you're going to learn all about in this upcoming video series. You're going to learn all there is to know about building modern distributed systems that are full stack applications on top of the Cloudflare platform. And you're going to do all of that using the Rust programming language. So if you're interested in a different way of building serverless applications, if you're interested in deploying to a region of the entire world, and you're interested in minimizing the startup performance of your applications, then this is gonna be the series for you. Let's get straight into it. And as you get into this, let's first understand exactly how Cloudflare works. So your typical serverless application, things like AWS Lambda, or really any of the serverless functions providers out there currently work in a very similar way. A new request comes into your application, that might be a HTTP request, some kind of infrastructure is initialized. Typically that's gonna be container based. So some kind of container is going to be started up and it's that container image that gives your code isolation. It protects your code from everybody else's code that is running on the same underlying bare metal. Once that container is ready, the runtime is initialized, .NET or Node or Java, your code's initialized and then your code actually executes. That is pretty comparable to how most of the current functions providers work. Cloudflare takes a different approach though. Cloudflare, instead of using containers as the base level of isolation, it uses the JavaScript V8 runtime. Now the JavaScript V8 runtime is the same runtimes that's used inside Chromium and that Node.js uses. And one of the reasons this is incredibly powerful is a feature of the V8 runtime called isolates. Isolates are what keep your browser tabs separate from each other. So imagine that you've got your bank open. Of course, I'm not actually going to open my bank. And you've got your social media open. I've got my Twitter account open here. Of course, you don't want your social media to be able to see what's going on inside your bank. So these two tabs are completely isolated. They are completely separate sandboxes. They have no way to interact directly with each other. This is the underlying technology that Cloudflare uses. So Cloudflare doesn't need to start up the runtime when a new request comes in. The runtime can be started up ahead of time. This is the V8 JavaScript runtime. That's gonna be running all the time on the underlying Cloudflare instances. So the JavaScript runtime is already there, it's ready to go. When a new request comes in, all that Cloudflare needs to do is create a new isolate. That can be as simple as just creating a browser tab. Very, very fast to create a new isolate. Then your code just, then your code needs to be downloaded and executed inside that isolated environment. Now, this is incredibly powerful for a few reasons. The first being it guarantees isolation between different pieces of code. But because these isolates are so small, it means that hundreds, if not thousands of different workers can all be running on the same underlying instance at the same time time. Performance of starting up an isolate almost completely eliminates cold starts. And you're going to see that in a few minutes when we actually deploy a real Cloudflare worker. Because workers don't have to start that entire process, the performance of creating an isolate can be as fast as five, six, seven milliseconds. Yeah, milliseconds. The other cool thing that workers does is that it starts this process of creating an isolate and starting up your code during the TLS handshake. So once the TLS handshake starts, Cloudflare is smart enough to say, huh, 
I know there's a TLS handshake happening for James's worker. I'm going to start up the process for creating an isolate and downloading the code whilst the handshake is happening. And that further shaves more time off that cold start performance. So it's a really cool way of doing this. Now, because all of this uses JavaScript, it's using JavaScript under the hood, it, it exposes quite a few browser APIs that you can use. The other thing it means, though, is that you can use WebAssembly inside your Cloudflare workers. That is what allows you to use Rust as a worker runtime because Rust can be compiled to WebAssembly and the Cloudflare team has done some really awesome work to improve the tooling and make it really easy to get started building with Cloudflare and Rust. So let's have a look exactly how you would do that. You're going to need to open up a terminal window and there's a few prerequisites you're going to need before you get started. NPM being one of them, Rust being the other, and you're also going to need to install the Wrangler CLI. So Wrangler is the Cloudflare CLI. So there's be instructions in the description below for you to go and get all of that installed. Once you've got Wrangler installed and Rust installed, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is add a target for WASM to Rust. This is gonna allow you to compile Rust code to WebAssembly. So you're gonna to need to add that target. I've already got that installed, so I don't actually need to do that. The other thing you're gonna to need to do is install the Cargo Generate CLI tool. I'm not actually gonna run this because it takes quite a while to run and I've already got it installed. But what Cargo Generate does is it allows you to define templates for generating new Rust applications. So once you've got Cargo Generate installed, you can run the Cargo Generate command passing in Cloudflare slash workers dash RS. And the Cloudflare team have done some really awesome work on setting up templates that you can use for generating new Rust-based Cloudflare workers. So when I run cargo generate Cloudflare workers dash RS, you're gonna be asked to select from a few different templates. For the purposes of this video, just select the Hello World template. And let's call this Hello YouTube just to give us something to work with. That's then gonna generate you some files on your file system. I'm gonna CD into the Hello YouTube folder, and then you're gonna open up Visual Studio Code. Before you dive into the code though, let's just have a look at a couple of other features that you can get with the Wrangler CLI. The first, and probably my favorite, is the Wrangler dev command. Local development is a first class citizen when you're building applications with Cloudflare workers. When I run Wrangler dev, this is gonna start up a local instance of my Cloudflare worker using the exact same runtime that it will use when it runs in production. This also includes the capability to start up emulators for all of the other various technologies that you have. So if you've defined a Cloudflare worker that's going to connect to, say, a D1 database, which is Cloudflare's persistent service, it will start up a local instance of the D1 database. So you can do all of your development locally using a emulator that is using the exact same runtime that it's going to use in production. So you know when you push it out to actually Cloudflare, it's gonna work just like it did on your machine. Once that's opened up, I can hit B to open up a browser tab and that will give me a running instance of my worker. I can refresh that a few times and I get the logs out into my terminal. So that is a local development experience using MPX Wrangler Dev. You're gonna use that more and more as you get through this series of videos. The second command, of course, the most useful one is MPX Wrangler Deploy. This is actually now gonna go and deploy your application out to Cloudflare. It's gonna package up your Rust application, it's gonna upload it to Cloudflare, and then it's gonna create a new worker. Once that's completed, you will get back a URL. I'm just gonna copy that and go back over to my browser window. And let's just see how fast this startup performance can be. So this is a brand new worker hitting for the first time, imperceptible startup performance. That was, I wouldn't even like to guess how fast that was, but it was very, very fast. You can see that. And then of course, if I hit that again over and over, it's gonna be really, really fast. Of course, this application isn't actually doing anything, but it's still a good demonstration of just how fast Cloudflare workers can be. It's super impressive stuff. So now that you've had a look at that, let's actually have a look at the application code. So I'm gonna open up my lib.rs file, zoom that in a little bit. And there's a few things here that are gonna be common to however you define your Rust applications when you're building with workers. The first is this event macro. The event macro defines the entry point 
for your application. So this fetch function is going to be the entry point. That event macro will take a parameter and there's a few different options you have here. Today you're using fetch. Fetch allows you to define an entry point for a API worker. You're going to host some kind of web application on this worker. There's also options for queues, for schedules, and you can do some things with the start option to actually do some initialization code on first startup. But today you're building a web application, so you're going to use the event macro. This is the entry point with the fetch parameter. Then you've got the fetch actual function itself. And the fetch function takes three parameters. The first being the actual HTTP request. This is where you can get access to the body, to the path parameters, the query string parameters, to all that stuff you would expect. You've got the environment parameter. This gives you access to any bindings, any environment variables, any secrets, anything you've defined alongside your Cloudflare worker environment. And then finally, you've got the context parameter. This gives you access to a couple of underlying JavaScript APIs. I'm not going to cover that too much in this video. Your fetch function also needs to return a result of type response. This response is where you actually define your response payload. Here, you're just defining a response with an OK200 status code with a body of hello world. One other thing I will point out here is this line of code here, this console error panic hook set once. Because workers under the hood are using JavaScript, JavaScript errors aren't immediately compatible with Rust panics. So if you don't have this line of code here, when your Rust code panics, you won't actually see anything useful inside your logs inside Cloudflare workers. What this code does here is it allows that Rust panic to propagate back up to a console.error in JavaScript, which will then make sure that panic comes all the way out into your logs inside Cloudflare. So this is an incredibly useful piece of code to remember. If you are getting errors in your Rust code and you're not seeing that in your logs anywhere, just make sure you've got this line of code set somewhere in your application code. Now, there's a couple of really cool packages that make all of this possible, that, and I'll put links to both of them in the description below. The first is the Wasm bind gen project for Rust, and this provides some high-level interactions between Rust and JavaScript. So it's that package that provides the interoperability between Rust and JavaScript. The second one is Wasm bind gen futures. This is very similar to Wasm bind gen. It provides interoperability, in particular, providing interoperability between Rust async code and JavaScript promises. So Wasm bind gen, Wasm bind gen futures, they're not something you'll ever need to look at specifically, but they're technologies that are being used to make all of this magic happen. So that is the general structure of a Rust Cloudflare worker. If you go and have a look at your code that we code that was generated, you'll see you've also got this wrangler.toml file. This is your actual configuration, your definition of your Cloudflare worker. This is where you would define environment variables, secrets, or bindings, and you're gonna learn more about bindings in a later video. For the minute though, it's the build command that is worth looking at. The build command uses this worker build cargo tool. This is what actually compiles your Rust application to Wasm and then also sets up all of the JavaScript code that's needed to call your WebAssembly code. If you go and have a look at the build directory, you will see some of this in action. You've got this index.js file, and this is gonna be the entry point. This is where your code's actually gonna run. This is what workers are gonna execute when the worker runs. Then inside your worker directory, you've got your actual WebAssembly code. You've got the index.wasm here. This is your compiled Rust application, as well as this shim.mjs file, which is a whole bunch of very confusing JavaScript that I've not actually took the time to pick apart and read. You can do that if you wish, and if you do, please let me know in the comments below exactly what this mjs file is doing. So that's what happens when you run mpx wrangler dev or wrangler deploy, is that this build command from your wrangler.toml is gonna run, Worker build is a tool that's going to compile your Rust code to Wasm and then set everything else up so that that Wasm can run inside Cloudflare workers. So let's actually try and get a bit more specific with the performance of this now. I'm going to change my application to say hello YouTube 
And I'm gonna go off and redeploy this now. So I'm gonna Wrangler deploy. That's gonna really quickly compile my Rust code because only my actual application code has changed. It's gonna re-upload that to Cloudflare and then it's gonna deploy a new version of my worker. Once that's complete, I'm actually gonna grab that URL and I'm gonna go over to Postman. And I actually wanna hit this endpoint in Postman to get a bit more of an idea of exactly what that re response time is. I'm gonna hit that for the first time, 65 milliseconds. 65 millisecond response time. That is the first time that endpoint has been hit and it's responded in 65 milliseconds. Hit that a few more times, 17 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. This performance is just off the charts. Now, of course, I realize I'm not actually doing anything useful inside this application code. I'm not connecting to a database. I'm not making any API calls, but to have this performance off the bat, there you saw a sub 100 millisecond startup response time. Incredible, incredible performance. So that's all for this first video. I wanted to just give you an introduction to Cloudflare workers, get you started deploying your first worker. In the next video, you're gonna learn more about some of the other features and functionality inside Cloudflare. And you're gonna do that through the context of a sample application. The link to this GitHub repo will be in the description below. You can go and check that out if you want to get ahead of time and you want to jump ahead of where you're up to in this video series. This is a chat application, a real-time chat application, which I know you've probably seen before. You've probably built many chat applications, but it's a really good sample application for looking at all the different features of Cloudflare. Databases, caches, durable objects, queues, all of them features and functionality fit pretty nicely inside a chat application. So if you want to go and have a look at this ahead of time, please feel free to go and have a look at the link in the description below. I will see you all in the next video.